Hey everybody, I'm Ian Golden, and I'm here in the DJ Tech Tools studio testing and reviewing the Tractor Control S4. I've come out of semi-review retirement to check out the S4 because it's a product that's close to my heart. I was heavily involved in the design of the original S4, uh, and I use a lot of Tractor's technology and their controllers on the road a ton. Lately, I've been DJing a lot with the S5. And so I was curious what they changed about the S4 in this new third version of the controller. And if I could switch from the S5, if it would be worth the upgrade. And I gotta say right off the bat, I'm pleasantly surprised. Not only is a new control S4 dropping right about now, but there's also a new version of Tractor Pro that just came out as well, and it looks totally different. All the things that you expect are still there, but a lot of things have been moved around, made different colors, different style, and put in different places. And the same is true for the new S4. Almost everything you expect to be here is here, with a couple new cool features that I think you'll really like. But many of the things that you may be used to using have been moved around or changed. So my first experience was, whoa, this is totally different. And indeed, it is totally different. The S4 Mark II was really a cosmetic upgrade to the Mark I. The Mark III is radically a, a pretty massive departure from actually all of the NI controllers in general. It adopts a new styling, a new design language, if you will, and it changes a lot of things. For example, there used to be the uh, shift, sync, pause, play right here on the lower, and they were mirrored, so left to right, pause, play at the bottom of your controller. Now they've adopted more of the CDJ style, where we've got pause, play both in the same place on the left side, and then we've got uh, the tempo faders on the right. A little bit of a different configuration. Sync also gets moved up here, master gets moved up here, and shift gets put below deck select. At first, I was a little confused and uh, a little bit discombobulated because things that I use so often, I have so much muscle memory, have been moved around. But as I begun to play with it, I'm getting used to the layout. And in fact, I'm liking a lot of things about it. For example, you now have this dedicated master section, which has got your headphone volume, your headphone mix, your effects selection, which we'll get into on this mixer effects section, and your master volume, and a nice big master volume meter. So it's really clear if you're clipping. And that's one of the big improvements among many of this controller is that you have much better metering. So you can clearly see the levels of each individual track and the levels of your master output. So that's a big plus. Another nice improvement, something that um, I think you guys will like a lot. Let me put on my headphones so I can hear what we're doing. You've got your mixer effects section. So essentially you've got some new effects uh, and you've doubled your effects. Tractor still has the traditional effects here, where if I've got my track going, I could put some reverb, maybe some delay. But then I've got my filter here, which all the other controllers and all the other mixers had. But I've got some user selectable effects. One, two, three, four. And I can put whatever I want in these, but they're typically, this one's a filter and a delay. This one's something different. I put a noise there. There's a bit of a crusher with a filter. And one thing that I really like, this was quite clever, is that you can put, so these effects are in addition to your standard tractor effects, you know, your more detailed, deep stuff that I typically use up here. You've got these on top of it. And they're also post fader. So if you use something like a, uh, a delay, that's a filter, and you pull down the fader, 
you're going to get that little bit of a nice delay trail off, which can be a cool effect and helpful in your mix outs. Um, you can choose which ones you want here and you can put different ones on different decks. So like I'd probably put the filters on my main two decks, but on this deck, I typically rock some remix decks. Um, and so I might put, and I probably will put uh, that nice filter or maybe uh, just a a noise on that channel. So I can have different mixer effects on different channels dedicated for different decks that do various things. What else do we like about this controller? Well, I was on the S5 and a lot of you may be on the S8 as well. And uh, one thing they kept from, from my original design was this sort of loop section where you, you know, set a loop here. Let's see this bigger. And you can move the loop around. And in between you have some information. Oh, what, what loop size am I setting? Really helpful for when I'm DJing to look down and see my loop information. Before it was just kind of a counter. Now you get a waveform view. You get the time remaining on your track. You get the key, you get the BPM. A lot of critical things that, you know, I wanna know while I'm DJing, uh, but I don't wanna go over and look at the screen for. So. It's a nice compromise. On the S5, I had this big, huge screen that was kind of redundant. It was duplicating my laptop screen. And I would typically go to the laptop screen for bigger things. But here I get big jog wheels and a little screen. And I feel like this is a nice compromise. And in general, I feel like that is the success of this controller. And why a lot of you are going to enjoy the controller is that it takes all the best things from the last five or six models that uh, NI has made and keeps them and then replaces or tries to iterate on the things that weren't working so well. So a lot of knowledge and sort of iterative design has gone into this. And I think in that regard, it's a nice mature product and a mature controller that has seen a lot of um, collective design thinking over the last 10 years of DJ controllers from lots of smart people in Berlin and beyond um, that have gone into this final result. So the big thing that happens, of course, that's added to the S4 that may be the real exciting thing for a lot of you is you now have these haptic drives and they're motorized. And as you can hear, not exactly Qbert, but these do feel pretty good. I had a lot of years on turntables. I did learn how to scratch a little bit, and I have to say that um, they're feeling really nice, and it's really easy to make them tighter or looser. There's some sort of magnetic drive system in here that gives you the exact feel you want, and it's really, really quite nice. A lot of you are probably wondering about the haptic feedback. One of the fun features that NI has been talking about is that you can feel your cue points using the jog wheel. So as you cross a cue point, you'll actually feel it and you can scratch it. In the current software I'm testing, I'm not able to really experience that. I did test it in their offices and indeed it felt pretty cool. It felt like I knew where the cue point was. Um, but for more information on that, I recommend you check out our full review online at djtechtools.com. There will be a link under this video where we're going to go into a lot more details, including getting the opinions of various DMC artists and people who truly scratch, unlike myself, to see what they think of the haptic drive system. What I can tell you is that the jog wheel for me, so I don't use it in turntable mode, I use it in jog mode, which means I can do pitch adjustments, um, and if I need to, grab the track, but mostly I'm using the jog wheels for pitch adjustments. And the size is clean, it's big, they're really easy to use. I was using the touch strip on the S5 for the last couple of years, and I'm really happy to be off that. I, I really enjoyed being able to nudge uh, and push songs more accurately back and forth. I'm gonna really enjoy being able to play um, old disco tracks and things that where I need to ride the beat a little bit, some more traditional old school DJing. Um, so I think that's a nice compromise 
And a lot of you who are on the S5 and S8 who maybe found yourself a little too dependent on beat grids will really enjoy these very high resolution tempo faders and the big accurate jog wheels, which I found um, very easy to beat match on. You can beat match on the fly just like you're on a turntable. You can put it in turntable mode or you can run it in jog mode. One really cool feature that I love on this, it's a surprise and, and it's a new thing in Tractor Pro. It's also a new thing on this controller uh, is in a remix deck here, I've got a little sample going here. I've got a little, little drum. And previously you either had a sequencer where you set up a sequence or you had samples. And in this one, you can very easily record a sequence with your samples in a remix deck. So what that might sound like, I got a track running here. That's my master track. I'm gonna sync this guy up. So I got this sample here. Now if I hit record, I can go ahead and record that over the beat. I could add on top of it. And if I wanna clear it out, I just press shift and that cell and that particular sequence stops running. Pretty cool, pretty simple. And I can see myself using this a lot because I use remix decks uh, a ton with loops and samples on top of my other tracks. And now for me to be able to quickly make little sequences, oh man, it's really exciting. And the implementation is really simple and easy to use on this particular controller. There's apparently a new DAC, a new digital to audio converter on this. And I asked them, I said, you know, it sounds much better to me in my headphones, on the speakers, like this thing was sounding really, really clear. And there's two things that changed. One, a much improved digital to audio converter that's in this controller. Um, we'll have the information in our review again, click the link below us to read the full review with all the details on that. So this guy apparently is much crispier and that was my experience. It's just sounding better. And they've changed the master limiter, which you can turn on or turn off in the software. And there's a setting where you can use the original tractor limiter or this new very transparent clean limiter that doesn't have as much distortion. The old limiter allowed distortion, allowed compression and created a bit of a warm, thick sound. And now there's a limiter that you can choose that's a little bit more clean and clear. In terms of things that I did not enjoy about this controller or that concerned me, I, I wish, I've got these three buttons, grid, turntable, jog, and you know, being controllerist or someone who likes to use controllers to do fun things, I kind of wish I could do more with the jog wheels. I kind of wish that I could press a button here and, and control some effects. The good news is, not right now, but in the future, you're gonna be able to remap or overmap functions onto this thing. So I could probably change grid to engage like a jog effects mode, which we will likely do, and we'll likely share that mapping with all of you once it becomes possible to do so. So a little bit of a gripe, not the end of the world. I also am a little bit bummed that, you know, sync moved all the way over here, and I found myself kind of almost making mistakes, you know, going for the same things that I knew in previous versions of the controllers where they used to be, but not there anymore. So. It's not the end of the world. It's gonna take some getting used to. And I have a feeling that once I get used to it, I'm gonna like this controller a lot better than I did the old one. Uh, and in fact, you know, when I first saw it, I thought, oh man, it's smaller. It's everything's a little bit tighter. It's a whole different look. I hate this look. That was my first reaction. But then as I was playing with it, uh, I started to really enjoy it. And now when I go back and I look at my S5, it looks a little toyish. The S5 has lots of room in between all of the functions. It's very open, it's very dynamic, but this controller looks and feels uh, literally a little bit more professional. For example, these new carbon protect faders feel really, really silky smooth. The gain knobs are really nice. 
All the knobs have a good resistance. They feel great. The whole controller, from the haptic jog wheels to the Q buttons and the play buttons, it just feels like a professional, modern controller. And I think that's what NI was going for with this release. And I think that's what they achieved. Uh, a blending of all the previous uh, pieces of knowledge from the last seven controllers that they've released um, and a new professional look and feel, both in the software and the hardware, I think is a big win. And if you have an existing controller, would probably be a pretty solid upgrade. Um, worth your money. You're gonna get a lot of extra things out of this. It's not just a visual upgrade, there's a lot of um, functionality as well. Um, louder headphones, louder mic inputs, cleaner DACs in terms of the cleaner outputs. You've got this whole mixer effects section. You've got um, rotating turntable style jog wheels. There's a lot of things in here that I think for me are definitely worth the upgrade. And I think I will be switching over from the S5 to the new Control S4 from Native Instruments. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out our full written review on this controller in the link below on djtechtools.com.